My name is Karen Campbell, and I'm the Secretary for Global and Intercultural Ministries in the United Reformed Church. In 2017, the Council for World Mission, CWM, launched its Legacies of Slavery project. It held four hearings in different locations of significance in the transatlantic slave trade. The UK, Ghana, Jamaica, and the USA exploring the relevant histories and engaging with local communities. The hearings wanted not only to uncover the past, but to face up to the ongoing legacies of slavery for different people around the world. They also asked how we, today, might work towards putting right the things which continue to be so wrong. <laughs> The United Reformed Church has been involved with the project from its start, with URC members taking part in all four hearings. The Legacies of Slavery Project report made 30 recommendations and encouraged CWM's member churches to engage with the findings. And so, the URC's Legacies of Slavery Task Group was born, formed by Mission Committee in 2019. The small yet hugely diverse group focused on three specific questions. One, should the URC offer an apology for the role of our antecedents in transatlantic slavery and for our role in the continuing legacies of racism and racial inequality? Two, should the URC offer any reparations and what might those reparations look like? And three, Given how pervasive the issue of white privilege continues to be in the world, how might we recognize and address where white privilege is at play in the URC and work to dismantle it? The task group completed its report in September 2019. It was then asked by Mission Council to do further work, including wider consultation, bringing recommendations to General Assembly 2021. This work was unavoidably delayed due to COVID. In fact, George Floyd, COVID, and Black Lives Matter all mean the world is a very different place since our original report of two years ago. We encountered some interesting questions in our Legacies of Slavery journey, both from the context around us and from within the Legacies task group itself. Racism? What racism? Or, is racism really that much of a problem in multicultural, multiracial Britain today? Aren't you creating the problem? So, are we exaggerating the problem? We start with the headlines. Black footballers experiencing monkey noises and outpourings of hatred on social media. But let's look behind the headlines to the inequalities experienced by ordinary black, Asian, and ethnic minority people in the UK, in every sphere of life. Jobs, pay, education, housing, health, to name just a few. The inequalities are mirrored within our own denomination too. But why are we talking about this now? The hurt has always been there. Many people have learned to keep their heads down and get on with it. Others are simply tired of speaking out and seeing no change or seeing things move backwards. But we dare not keep quiet about injustice. Think about the murder of George Floyd. Think of COVID, this terrible pandemic, which seems to be disproportionately deadly for black communities in the UK and around the globe. You know, I remember in the early days of COVID, some skeptics, being really quite dismissive while asking, can a virus be racist? The answer is no. But as is continuously being revealed, the ways our societies are organized can very definitely be systemically racist. 
full of inequalities which put some communities at greater risk. And so there has been an awakening, or is it a reawakening, of the fact that black lives matter, or should matter, or are not being treated as if they matter. Black people and white people around the globe are demanding change. Whether we want to face it or not, racism is well entrenched in Britain's history. Britain was a major player in the transatlantic slave trade. Transatlantic slavery played a huge role in Britain's commercial and industrial revolutions, a history we often fail to tell ourselves or others. Slavery had existed before, but it was transatlantic slavery that applied slavery almost entirely to Africans, defining those who could and couldn't be enslaved by the color of their skins. So, a racial hierarchy was instituted in people's minds. A hierarchy which spread to all areas of the British Empire, even where slavery had not been practiced, such as the Indian subcontinent. The default notion of racial hierarchy still defines systems and relationships within nations and between nations in all spheres of life today. The slave trade was abolished by Parliament in 1807, followed in 1833 by the abolition of slavery throughout the British Empire. Slave owners were granted £20 million as compensation for their loss of property, equivalent to approximately £340 billion today, funded through loans which British taxpayers only, only finished paying off in 2015 but not one of the 800,000 ex-slaves was compensated for their suppression of freedom or that of their ancestors. Black people, then and now, were simply expected to get over it. So what has all this got to do with the URC? Well, the problem is not just out there in the world. It has never been just out there, but very much here in the church. The church is called to be a mirror to society, but too often we are a mirror of society. It was no different with transatlantic slavery. Many Christians, including people of particular note from our own dissenting heritage, were slave owners or slave traders, or were apologists for transatlantic slavery. Missionary endeavors focused on saving souls rather than liberating bodies, Indeed, Christian education was often regarded as helping to make enslaved Africans more obedient and accepting of their slavery. To a great extent, black people were viewed as less than human, so it wasn't really a sin to enslave and abuse them. White was superior, black was inferior. Although rarely spoken so starkly, the echoes remain today. In its work, the Legacies of Slavery Task Group looked for biblical underpinning for its considerations. There are very obvious references, the call to love your neighbor, and Jesus' response to the question, who is my neighbor? In Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. And the example of Zacchaeus, who seeks to put right to an extent even greater than the law required, for the wrong he had inflicted. More recently, the task group has been drawn to the image of the church as Christ's body, where all belong. But here's a question. Are black people continually relegated to the position of the little toe, largely invisible, hidden, overlooked, and taken for granted? Yet, stub that toe, break it, and the whole body struggles. We have also reflected from verses in James 1. It feels that COVID enables society and the church to take a good hard look in the mirror and see more clearly so many of our flaws, particularly those pertaining to racial injustice. But now that lockdown is easing, are we going to forget what we have seen? Are we going to forget God's call to respond? Many people within our church point out that the URC has been full of good intentions and positive res resolutions, 
which we have then failed to put into practice. When we look in the mirror, how do we see ourselves? And how do we see others in comparison to how we see ourselves? The URC Legacies of Slavery Task Group did a lot of thinking and honest talking. We were very different people, coming from very different backgrounds and contexts. But together, we recommended three things. Apology, yes. The URC should offer an apology and confession, in part for the role played by our predecessors in the transatlantic slave trade, the benefits of which we continue to enjoy. But maybe even more pertinent, we should apologize for our complicity in the racist legacies of slavery which continue to shape our world today, our nation and our church. Although we are not responsible for the sins of our forebears centuries ago, we definitely are responsible for allowing them to poison our society in the 21st century. As well as confessing to God, we should offer an apology to show our global church partners in Africa and the Caribbean and African diaspora communities, including here within the URC, that we have heard their pain. We acknowledge and take seriously our part in causing that pain. And we commit ourselves to redressing that situation. To the question of reparations, yes, the URC should consider some form of reparations, which we are rewording as repairing justice. This is needed to give substance to the words of an apology. Actions speak louder than words. It will involve some financial commitment, not repaying, because there is no amount of money that can give back what has been lost by Africa and her diaspora communities, but some degree of putting our money where our mouth is to show our partners and ourselves that we are serious about this. We further envisage programs of education, truth-telling and community projects addressing specific needs in local communities. And to the question of white privilege, we recommend an ongoing journey of engagement with and understanding of the issues of white privilege in order that we can work together to redress the balance and bring about true racial justice as part of a journey towards justice for all. The Legacies of Slavery Task Group is seeking to engage with people across the breadth of the URC to find out your thoughts, your responses, whether you are supportive of our direction of travel, whether you think we have missed anything key. We are working with a view to bring in concrete proposals to General Assembly in 2022, the URC's Jubilee year. We hope this will include a widely endorsed apology to be adopted by General Assembly and proposals for repairing justice. And we hope to affirm the ongoing journey of engagement with white privilege as an integral part of our commitment to becoming an actively anti-racist church. Thank you for your listening and thank you for your support. <laughs>